uh, um, some some non wave lands a disturbance. So by non wave disturbance, uh, we just mean that the um, whatever uh, um, the wavelength is much much non larger than whatever is the mean free pass. I say if you have water, then this uh, typical collision mean free pass. And if you are in the strongly coupled field theory, and then this mean free pass then should be of order, say, one over the temperature. Okay. And uh, the physics of this disturbance depends on very much uh, whether this is a conserved quantity. If this is not conserved quantity, then of course there's no nothing, there's no constraint. Essentially, uh, such kind of disturbance can relax uh, 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 locally everywhere at the same time. And essentially, uh, uh, the relaxation time, uh, just roughly uh, at the time of the mean free, yeah, just the time scale of the mean free time. And uh, 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 just any such kind of disturbance will be very quickly uh, dissipated. Okay. But if it's a conserved quantity, and then you have a global constraint, because a global quantity, uh, a conserved quantity cannot be destroyed, but they can only be transported. And, uh, and so they cannot relax locally. And that implies that if you take the wavelengths to infinity, actually, they take actually infinite time for them to relax. And so, uh, so if you make longer and longer wavelengths uh, uh, excitations, and then at the left, the lag time will be uh, longer and longer. Okay? So relaxation here means just kind of the equivalent of aerialization, just spreading the conserved quantity out equally among degrees of freedom or? Yeah, just say if you create a disturbance and you ask how long this disturbance will be dissipated. But it's conserved, so. Yeah, conserved, uh, but still, uh, conserved you can uh, spread out. Spread out. Yeah, spread out. Uh, but yeah, uh, for non-conserved quantity, you will be dissipated, and but for conserved quantity, it will just be transported. Um, I, I guess that you're, you're still talk, talking about a relaxation time. Yeah. I'm just asking it's a relaxation to the to equilibrium. Even Situation though can with that concern. Yeah, even though uh, uh, say if you create a long wave dense fluctuations, uh, for uh, for example some kind of sound wave. And, and this sound wave eventually can also dissipate. And uh, even though the uh, even though the energy and momentum are conserved, mm -hmm. but but, some, uh, but, uh, but the excitation itself uh, uh, still can dissipate. But they can only dissipate by through the transport. And uh, uh, so that means if you have conserved quantities that will guarantee will necessarily lead to gap phase and non <coughs> non leap mode. Okay? And uh, and in a sense these are the only in the generic situation, these are the only non wave non leap modes in the thermal equilibrium. So even you start with a CFT in the vacuum, uh, you can have many, many gap mo uh, 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 gap phase excitations. But when you go to the finite temperature uh, uh, when you go to thermal equilibrium, then the only gap phase and the non leap mode can exist are associated with, are associated with the conserved quantities. You say, uh, uh, I'm saying in the generic situation, uh, uh, not including in the case, say, if you have a foamy surface, or if you have a symmetry breaking, or if you are near a phase transition, then there can be, uh, there, then there can be actual gap phase modes. Okay? And then, of course, then the low energy physics will be captured by those, uh, 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 by those modes. And then, of course, in physics, if we want to study, uh, most of the time we want to, uh, we are interested in the low energy physics, and then you want to get the effective field speed from that. Okay. And of course, such a uh, uh, low, uh, low energy effective theory already exists, and this is just hydrodynamics. And hydrodynamics precisely used to capture such kind of uh, 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 long wavelengths and long lifetime excitation. Uh, in the thermal, uh, in the uh, uh, around thermal equilibrium, and uh, so uh, so let me just uh, uh, quickly remind you uh, uh, the rough uh, uh, the formulation of hydrodynamics. So let's start with the thermal equilibrium. Uh, so this is the grand canonical uh, uh, partition, uh, 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 grand canonical uh, density matrix. So the beta is the one over the temperature, and the mu is the chemical potential for some conserved charge, uh, 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 which I write as the zero component as J zero. The, uh, the zeroth component of the charge density is J0. And I also introduce a velocity U mu, and uh, you can also boost the system to some kind of frame, and uh, this U mu here will be a constant, okay? And uh, 
and uh, uh, um, yeah, and so this defines your uh, uh, your can uh, grand canonical uh, uh, density matrix, thermal density matrix. So U mu is defined how in terms of the, that conserved charge that that J zero do not measure or no. So T0 mu, uh, no, 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 U mu is just, uh, uh, U mu is just some velocity. You can just boost your system, right? Uh, 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 take I'm, the I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how you define your rest, what you mean by the, the rest frame. The rest frame. Yeah, you can define a rest frame. Uh, so the rest frame is the fluid does not move. Uh, 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 so some heat bump fluid is moving. Yeah. Uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the fluid itself uh, uh, defines the rest frame. Uh, 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 it's just if you have a homogeneous uh, a medium, and the medium itself defines the rest frame point. And, uh, and the frame, which is the, uh, uh, that medium does not move, defines the rest frame. And then I can talk about the frame which in relative motion with that frame, and that defines the medium. I guess what is asking if there is nothing like a number current, or right. number mm -hmm. density. How do, how do, I, know, no, no, do no. I know whether the fluid is moving or not? Is, hmm? it, is, you basically, know. is it the frame in which J mu happens to be oh. purely oh, so this is the so this is the frame which you don't have. Yeah, so this is the frame T zero i will be zero. T zero i, uh, uh, this equilibrium, so, so T zero i and J i will be zero. Yeah. Yeah. So this defines my rest frame, and uh, yeah, is it, is it two different conditions. No, the same condition. I'm just uh, 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 I'm in the equilibrium. I mean the equilibrium. In the equilibrium, uh, and uh, by definition, uh, I can find the frame. Both of them are zero. Uh, 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 if one of them is non-zero, then this is a. Uh, uh, if one of them is non-zero, then it's not the equilibrium situation. One more hydrodynamics. We're not in equilibrium. No, but I'm uh, uh, here. I'm first start with equilibrium. Okay. Yeah, yeah. First, I'm talking about equilibrium. Then, uh, then I will talk about the, the disturbance around the equilibrium. Yeah. So, so, so the equilibrium. I can talk about uh, uh, my, uh, my grand uh, uh, canonical uh, density matrix, mm -hmm. and then now let's consider non-wavelength excitations. How we do that? So, what we do is that essentially we promote those quantities, the beta, u mu, and the chemical potential, <coughs> into uh, uh, dynamic variables, and of course the, uh, uh, they are assumed to be uh, allowed uh, and, uh, um, depend on the space time. Uh, in a very slow way, uh, so they are slowly varying functions of space time. And uh, of course, the assumption behind this is that the uh, locally, uh, locally, uh, you still have some equilibrium. And only when you look at large distances, then you will have disturbances. Okay. Uh, so you promote them uh, uh, into into dynamic variables, and then you can express your stress tensor or the expectation value of the stress tensor and the conserved current in terms of the expansion of those uh, uh, variables. And uh, 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 so this is so-called uh, uh, constitutive relations. And uh, uh, so, uh, 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 so this is based on general principle, uh, and you can, uh, 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 um, yeah, yeah, because if those things are constant, mm -hmm. uh, and then you just have the, uh, and then you just have constant and the density, et cetera. Um, so, and that's, formulate your hydrodynamics, now you can just impose the conservation of the stress tensor and the conservation of the current, and then this gives you d plus y equations. So, uh, so if I, in, in, I mean a deep d dimensional space time, and uh, this gives me uh, a d plus y equations, then I have d plus y variables here. So u mu is always normalized. Let's say, say let's say let's do a uh, 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 relativistic uh, uh, case, and I always normalize this to minus one, so I have d plus y variables, have d plus one equations, then I have a closed system which I can solve. Okay, uh, and so this is the uh, the standard formulation of hydrodynamics. Of course, this is extremely powerful. Essentially, governs all aspects of our life, and that essentially that's how we come here. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, how I come uh, 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 and also I think part of it's how I came. Hmm? No, no, that's not how you came. <laughs> you drove here. I flew. <laughs> yeah, I flew. Um, and uh, also the hurricane. Uh, um, also the dynamics inside the sun, and also the galaxy evolutions, uh, evolution of the universe. And also, more recently, has been discovered that the uh, 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 in the in the quark plasma, 
are, are, are created by Rick and the hydrodynamics, play, uh, relativistic hydrodynamics actually uh, 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 um, captures the evolution of this quark plasma created the weak and the HC very well. Oh, I have a question. So you never actually required the equation of state, just the conservation was enough to determine the entire evolution. Oh, uh, uh, equation of state is an input. So can you the equation number of equations don't look like they require anything else, right? No, the equation of state is an input uh, uh, which you uh, 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 yeah, it, it, it just depends on what you choose to be in the independent variable. And, uh, and the temperature is a proxy for energy density. Chemical potential is a proxy for charge density. So those relations have been different. Yeah, yeah. And then everything else expressed in terms of them. For the number of pressure, I express it in, in terms of them using the equation state. So uh, uh, the quark plasma is described by the hydrodynamics and uh, also uh, graphene. Very recently, only just a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, there was uh, two science paper and one nature physics paper. People just uh, 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 found that actually graphene, uh, the electrons inside the graphene, they actually flow like water. Uh, and actually hydrodynamics provides a very good description uh, of graphene. Um, you mean a liquid or? It's electron liquid. Yeah, no, hydrodynamics are also applied to gas. So when you say electrons air, you mean they think that they're liquid? No, hydrodynamics apply to liquid, right? Uh, water. Water is Strong what hydrodynamics is. No, but the air you can move. Both gas or liquid? Hmm? It's a fluid. Sorry? Fluid. 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 Yeah. Fluid. Yeah, your yeah, water. Certain so, uh, so, so, so hydrodynamics can describe liquid. No, no liquid or gas. Both, are both. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, that's what I'm asking. When you say that electrons behave hydrodynamically, uh, like water, you mean like a liquid or you mean like a fluid? It's more like a liquid, more like a fluid. Compressibility. It's more really like a liquid. It's, uh, it's not, um, uh, it, the interactions are important. It's not, say, some dilute gas. Yeah. Okay, but despite the long and the glorious uh, uh, history, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a subject of more than uh, uh, centuries old, uh, maybe a uh, uh, few centuries. And, uh, but there's a major defect of hydrodynamics, because this is written in terms of equation motion. And, uh, and, uh, and in that equation motion formulation, it does not capture fluctuations. But, but fluctuations, of course, are everywhere. And they're always statistical fluctuations. So inside this room, we can describe using really hydrodynamics as a, as a state which the air does not move, uh, as a solution which the, uh, the air does not move. But of course, the, if you look at any particular corner, there, there can be temperature fluctuations, there can be density fluctuations. And this kind of uh, things which we often say, uh, uh, which you, when you teach statistical physics, you, you ask your students to forget. And, uh, but they're actually very important. And they play an important role in many uh, uh, in many physical contexts. For example, people have discovered uh, there's so, uh, something so called a long time tail. And if you uh, look at the say density density relation functions, and if you calculate from hydrodynamics uh, 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 separated in time, and the hydrodynamic would predict that they should decay exponentially. But if you do numerical experiment, you find they actually decay at the power law. And then people eventually realize that the, that power law is due to fluctuation. And uh, um, and also in transport, when you fluctuate, and uh, can can affect viscosity. For example, uh, uh, the fluctuation of statistical fluctuation cause can affect the viscosity, can, uh, can affect conductivity, etc. And uh, um, and uh, and also uh, in the near the phase transition can play a very important role because the near the phase transition, what characterizes the phase transition is that the fluctuation <coughs> become very very big. Right, it is a very big fluctuations, and typically all the parameters can couple to the uh, to the stress tensor, uh, um, and uh, uh, and then and then the, uh, uh, then the statistical fluctuation, and the, the all the parameter fluctuations they can treat on, um, yeah, they can just uh, I I interact with each other, and actually that will change the dynamic aspect of the phase transition. Um, and also in the non-equilibrium steady states, uh, uh, again, fluctuations play a very important role, and the turbulence, etc. And uh, 
In particular, uh, uh, most of the physical systems, they're <coughs> finite size. For example, quark-1 plasma created a weak, they're, tiny, uh, they're, they're like uh, of, of order 10 to 14 Fermi's size. It's really very small statistical system. So we'd expect statistical fluctuation would be significant. Also in graphene, uh, typically it can also not make it too big. And uh, so, so you would expect the, uh, 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 in many situations, the, uh, uh, the fluctuation can be important. Mm, sorry? In turbulence, there is some phenomenon called intermittency. The fluctuations are larger than you might Yeah, that's right. That's that's what right. Mean. Uh, 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 that is one aspect. Also, there's another aspect. And the way people overtreat the turbulence is they use this uh, stochastic stochastic hydrodynamic to treat the turbulence. And, uh, and what we will describe, uh, a stochastic hydrodynamic is the one to capture fluctuations. Yeah, so you can write it as a stochastic system, and then you can do RG flow exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, when you go to low temperatures, then the, uh, then the quantum fluctuations can also be important. So, so of course, the, uh, 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 this is another question. Uh, uh, this is another question people have not thought before. Uh, uh, at the phenomenological level, the way to, to adjust this problem is uh, is to use so-called stochastic hydro. So the idea of the stochastic hydro uh, is to get inspiration from the, say, Brownian motion. So what you would do is on the right-hand side of your uh, conservation equation, you normally put zero, and now you put some noise term. And the noise term is intended to use to capture those short-distance fluctuations. Okay? It's it, it, it just like Brownian motion, uh, and you add some uh, stochastic force. And here it's the similar, uh, and you add some noise term. But the way you add noise term, of course, is arbitrary. And, uh, but on general ground, you can argue, uh, actually, at least to the linear order, and uh, uh, the uh, noise should have Gaussian distributions. And uh, or just uh, uh, on general ground from statistical figures, uh, they should be local, uh, 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 they should obey ga uh, 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 Gaussian distributions. And uh, that works if you are only interested in the linear problem. So if you're only interested in the linear problem, and then this uh, 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 captures essentially all the physics. There's also some size of those noise terms, right? Some a, a size, an amplitude, so to speak, of the That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And you need a separate theory? Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, that size is normally just... So uh, so you can write down a, a Gaussian, uh, and then you're talking about this uh, prefactor of the Gaussian. So the prefactor of a Gaussian is related through the fluctuating dissipation theorem mm -hmm. to the, say, to the transport, uh, to the dissipative term. And so they are related. Yeah. Uh, so essentially... Uh, uh, analog of the diffusion loss. That's yeah. right. Uh, uh, yeah. So they are just related to, uh, for example, they are related to viscosity, mm -hmm. etc. And uh, yeah. So, so the linear level, this is adequate, works very well. But of course, the, uh, uh, there's always nonlinear effect. Uh, 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 in fact, uh, in many cases, nonlinear effect can be important. And uh, then you would expect that there will be uh, uh, nonlinear interaction among the voices. Then, of course, it's not captured by the Gaussian distribution. So by linear level, you mean uh, I the left hand side? Are you mean <coughs> things which are linear in the U mills? Yeah, 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 that's a good question. Yeah. So, so when you write down that equation, what normally people do is that. This one you treat just purely as a Gaussian, mm -hmm. but this one you can treat as nonlinear because we know right. how to do nonlinear. Right, right. And then it's not clear this is a well-defined approximation. If you do everything <laughs> linear, <laughs> then that is a well-defined. Yes, okay. uh, then you can go beyond that. You say let's do this nonlinear. This I don't. Uh, this I still just do this uh, and Gaussian. Uh, then it's not clear whether that's a legitimate truncation, legitimate extension or not. And uh, and this is one of the motivation to understand whether this can do it. And uh, and yeah, so 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 yeah, so so there uh, we'll, there can be interaction among the noises, and there can also be interaction between the dynamic variable and the noises beyond just such a source a, a, a kind of interaction. Okay, and because this interaction is very specific, just the linear source, linear linear noise coupled to the uh, 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 your dynamic variable, and also also if, if you look at that equation. Only noise fluctuates. The dynamic variable only fluctuates indirectly through the noise. But you would expect uh, the dynamic variable should also fluctuate themselves. 
okay? And uh, 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 um, yeah, so um, so until now, it's actually not known how to treat such kind of nonlinear effects uh, systematically. And actually, it's not even clear this is a good question. Because uh, if you think about the noises and think about the uh, uh, nonlinear di dynamics noises, you may worry that somehow maybe this depends on short distance physics, and it may um, somehow it may uh, uh, depend on your model details, etc. And yeah, so, uh, so at least so far, there have not been a way but we treat such things in the in the universal way. Okay. So so what I would like like to say, if you can develop the hydrodynamics as a generally knowledge effective field theory, as the one, uh, uh, as for example you do for the pion theory, and then you would say, then we will have a full interacting theory of noises, and then we, uh, then we will capture those theory, then we will be able to capture those effects in the universal way. Okay, uh, so that's the goal, and I will present such a theory. And uh, there's a lot of reason why somehow we are uh, seeking for some kind of action principle formulation of hydrodynamics. Because the current formulation of hydrodynamics, even though it works very well, but at certain level it's very awkward from theoretical perspective. Uh, 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 yeah, let me just remind you that the, uh, the key aspect of the, uh, uh, the hydrodynamics is this called the uh, constitutive relations. So you write down your stress tensor and the current in terms of the relative expansion of your dynamic variables, which are temperature, uh, uh, chemical potential, and velocity. Okay? And naively say, if I do effective field theory, and then you just write down the most general expansion to be compatible with symmetry, then that's it. Okay? And that's naively what you would like to do. I, I just write down the most general derivative expansion. But it turns out that's give you a wrong answer. Okay? Uh, 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 it, it turns out that gives you a wrong answer. Um, then, oh, yeah. yeah. Not enough just to write down the most general derivative expansion. Uh, if you do that way, you actually find even at the first derivative level, you get the, you get transport new trans <coughs> you get the more transport coefficients than is observed in nature. Okay, so somehow you have to get rid of them. You have to find your theory to get rid of them, and the and then uh, uh, you get rid of them is that you impose some module constraints, and they normally impose two. So one is uh, so called entropy condition. Is is that you construct other entropy current. Uh, in terms of those dynamic variables. And then you require that the solution of your equation should be such that when, when this entropy current evaluated on your solutions, you should lead to non-negative divergences everywhere. So that means you should have local second law of some dynamics everywhere uh, your solution should satisfy that. And turns out this will put constraints on your constitutive relation and get rid of some transport coefficients. And the second thing is so-called Ansag relation. So as uh, so Ansag famously observed, that if your underlying theory is uh, time reversal, uh, 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 is time reversal invariant, and then the then the then the linear response matrix must be linear, uh, uh, right. must be symmetric. And uh, and this does not come immediately if you just write down the most general derivative expansion. And then you then essentially have to again solve solve your solutions for linear response. And impose this by hand, okay? Impose this by hand. And uh, these are awkward because if you somehow use the property of the solution to constrain your equation motion, and this is not what we normally do in the effective field theory. In the effective field theory, we just specify the symmetry, and then that's it. That's just my equation. That's my theory, okay? And uh, and also, it's not clear what are the microscopic derivation of those uh, two module constraints. And for example, how do you derive? Uh, that the entropy somehow have to be non-negative point by point. Because naively, you don't, uh, uh, why do you need to impose the entropy constraint point by point? And also, a, a lot of questions are, are these constraints complete? And those constraints should be complete at the first derivative level, because be, uh, at the first derivative level, yeah, wait a second, let me just finish. Uh, at the first derivative level, we have so much experimental uh, uh, data, and uh, uh, so you, we know must be right. But, but, but if you, but theoretically, you can write this to higher derivatives, uh, higher order derivatives. And then, how do you know actually uh, 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 those constraints actually complete? Yes? I, I don't understand your question about microscopic mm -hmm. derivation. It seems to me that you're making a, the assumption of local equilibrium just to have this 
a factual description. Right. So why wouldn't you expect that from the usual lo uh, the local equilibrium uh, arguments right. that you should still only have the divergence of the entropy being non-negative? And similarly, onset the relations right. from a time reversal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Certainly, those are well motivated. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, say they're motivated. I'm not saying they're not well motivated. They're certainly well motivated. But still, there's a little bit com funny in the sense of the following. If you think about the entropy, right? Um, the entropy should grow for isolated system. And if you look at the small part of the fluid, and they assume this small part of the fluid is in local thermal equilibrium, but it's still this thermal, uh, this small part of fluid is surrounded by, by the rest of the fluid, which is a bus, uh, can consider as a bus mm -hmm. for this small part. But then this small part, by its, uh, surrounded by the bus, does not have to, uh, uh, the entropy does not have always increased. That, that equation doesn't say that it has to increase. It's only, it's, there's an entropy current there, and it just says that the divergence has to be non-negative. It's true. So it allows entropy flow in and out of subsystems. Yeah, yeah, but energy, uh, 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 but have to be, uh, be able to do it point by point. You have to do it. Be, uh, be able to do it point by point. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can generalize it. You can generalize the entropy uh, 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 to uh, to define a uh, 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 current. Uh, uh, so uh, so uh, so the lowest order. So the lowest order you can define a, a current by uh, just take the entropy density times the velocity of the flow, and then this defines the entropy density. Oh, oh, entropy current. Okay, uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, but still, would be good to have some macroscopic way to understand how those relations come from, or or, or have some ma more macroscopic way to impose those conditions. And so just are, are you looking for an analog of a local version of the H theorem, or I mean, are you asking uh, what kind of averaging do I need to do in order to see? Uh, See, in, in classical statistical mechanics, one defines a quantity called H. Right. So that typically is not monotonic, but if you average over long it, time it, scales, it becomes monotonic, right? That's the key. I think yeah. that relation must come from some uh, 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 averaging. Averaging, right. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, and this is, uh, uh, again, uh, 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 highlights the... So when you include the fluctuations, certainly we know that when you include fluctuations, the entropy is not conserved. When mm -hmm. you include the fluctuations, the entropy is not conserved. Uh, so this condition must come from some kind of uh, 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 averaging process. That's what you asked. And so you would like to say, have some kind of fundamental formulation and see this arises out of this kind of averaging process. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, does, does the sense there want you to show that the, the, these relations follow from a partition function? No, no, not necessarily. No, no, no. Uh, the, uh, the, the, this is not uh, a partition function if you have uh, 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 a general dynamical situation. Partition function is only for static. Uh, uh, if you're in the static situation, you can talk about partition function. No, I, I'm talking about in the sense of this partition like, If I write a field theory, I can find out what is partition Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, certainly what we want to find is we find the, we want to find the partition local formulation of hydrodynamics. And uh, 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 but I will not call it a partition function because partition function have a specific meaning in statistical physics. Yes, yeah. I, I want yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one more uh, question. Yeah. So you said these uh, theories apply to uh, the universe as well, but does this apply to like dust, with gravity? Of course, there's uh, so equilibrium, but because um, then I will see you don't necessarily satisfy this con entropy constraint. Yeah, yeah. So this wouldn't apply in this. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, so you say it again, you say, uh, 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 you say in the case of the gravity? Yeah, dust just uh, acting with one, you know, one of our or Yeah, so yeah. We, we can't do this, uh, this kind of thing with um, In the, I would think still apply. Uh, uh, you, uh, e even in the presence of the external field, uh, 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 you ha uh, you no. still uh, require this to be satisfied. Well, not not external field, but just a mutual attraction between the particles. Because um, then you have negative specificity, and uh, it's not clear that the entropy. Yeah, but at the, the hydrodynamic level, at the long distance setup, this should apply. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
yeah, if at the long distance level this can be uh, uh, described as a uh, disturbance, yeah, uh, uh, if you have equilibrium of the, if such kind of thing you describe have equilibrium. Well, that's, uh, it doesn't, so that's the... Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, here we assume there's equilibrium. Yeah, um, it's yeah. unstable. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah it, in an unstable situation then you, then you may need to describe, uh, 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 do some other, uh, 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 <coughs> this is say perturbation, uh, a distur not only a disturbance around mm -hmm. a stable yeah. uh, or thermal equilibrium. Yeah. Yeah. Worry that the hydrodynamic approximation will simply break down yeah. in these instances. Mm. Right. Yeah, because there's a time is, uh, time scale issue. Yeah. It's uh, 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 what's the time scale of, of your stability mm -hmm. and the time scale you want to talk about hydrodynamics. And uh, hydrodynamic principle you want to work at a very long time scale. Okay. So. Uh, so we will try. To, uh, we will be able to actually derive this constraint from a more fundamental principle. Yeah, I should actually clarify this. Uh, uh, at the moment, at, at the moment, we are not yet be able to directly derive this equation, but we can derive the consequences of this equation. <laughs> uh, and we show that uh, we have some symmetries, and the symmetry reproduces the consequence of this equation. And, uh, and then it's another step to see actually this equation itself come out from that. Yeah, that we have. That I think can be done, but we have not done yet. Okay. And, uh, and uh, 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 there's also some advantage if you have action principle for hydrodynamics because that will make it easier, for example, to generalize uh, hydrodynamics, uh, even equation motion to less familiar situations, say, say if you have momentum dissipation, and, uh, and then, then how to generalize it, uh, um, mm. then you no longer have momentum conservation equations, etc. And to have some action principle, then sometimes can make it easier. Okay, uh, of course, the finding some kind of action principle for hydrodynamics is not a new problem. It, it, it's a very old problem, at least dating back as far as I know to, to Hackler, maybe even earlier, uh, uh, in 1911. So he wrote down uh, um, uh, action for ideal fluid. Uh, he wrote down action for the ideal fluid. Um, and, uh, 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 and uh, since then, uh, uh, since 1911, of course, there have been many results. Most of the uh, uh, most of the results are at non dissipative level, and uh, yeah, it just it's tricky how to deal with dissipation. Say, uh, if you think about it classically, if you have dissipation, how we do write down action, and uh, and this has um, yeah, this is a uh, a difficult question from the classical point of view, and uh, and also um, uh, mostly people actually were searching just for the from the perspective to find the, the action principle to reproduce the equation motion. And uh, I emphasize this is very different from to think uh, uh, the hydrodynamics as effective field theory. And because this is, uh, uh, this may not be unique, but from effective field theory point of view, uh, uh, the symmetry exactly should constrain you to, to a unique theory. Uh, um. And uh, there, there are many activities, uh, also there are many activities in the 70s, uh, since 70s to understand the physics of hydrodynamic fluctuations. Uh, so these are mostly from, uh, from logical level I described earlier. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so before I talk about how to develop this effective field theory, let me still uh, mention something uh, or, or as a preparation. So here we are interested in the effective theory Describe it nonlinear di uh, dynamics around the state. Okay, you uh, 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 have a thermal state, and then you try to disturb it in the in the in the in the vi uh, in the arbitrary way. It, it can be violent, but as far as non wavelengths okay, uh, 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 around the state. And this is very different from actually uh, our normal situation, which we normally uh, consider the effective field theory uh, uh, describing transition amplitude. So. So we are normally interested in the uh, effective field theory described as a scattering, say, say how pi on scattering, etc. And uh, uh, if you're only interested in the transition amplitude, that's what you normally do. So you start with the initial state, your in state, and your out state. You may also insert some operators here, and then you have a path integral from t equal to uh, minus infinity to t plus infinity. So this is your in state, and that's your out state. And in state is different from the out state. Okay. And uh, and that's the uh, the standard situation. 
but if you want to describe uh, uh, a transition, uh, if you want to describe expectation value, then you instead and outstate should be the same. And, uh, and then you need to do something a little bit different. And, uh, and that can be already be seen just from the evolution, uh, a typical evolution of a state. So, uh, so a typical state can be described by a density matrix. And density matrix involved with two unitary operators, okay? one on the left and one on the right. And that if you write in the path integral point of view, each evolution operator gives you a path integral. And so you, essentially that gives you two paths. One from one going forward in time and one going backward in time. So this going forward in time is a standard one uh, and this going backward in time. But now if you are, uh, are interested in the expectation value, then you take the trace and essentially just close one side of it. Then, then for example here we close it. Okay? And then essentially you have this closed path and with two, <coughs> two copies of space-time. So this contour contains two copies of space-time. One is upper lag and lower lag. Okay? And, uh, and so this is so-called the, the uh, uh, closed path, closed time path formula or single package contour. So, so in order to define your attractive field theory around some ensemble, you have to use such a formula. Okay? Uh, uh, only that way you can capture uh, the physics in the literature. And this is essential. Once you do this, then the, the actually fluctuation and dissipation are automat automatically incorporated. You don't need to introduce any additional uh, tricks to do dissipation, and the dissipation so, uh, uh, so that will be auto automatically incorporated in this form. Yeah, because, <coughs> any, uh, 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 because the thermal density matrix uh, 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 includes the dissipation itself. Good? Oh no! This is just a, 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 a this is a mathematical description. Uh, uh, this is a mathematical description just to describe the uh, uh, the excitation value around such a state. Uh, 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 such a state. Uh, it, it does not say anything about wh whether the evolution is time reversal or not. Uh, uh, that would be additional constraint you need to impose. So, so for example, you can uh, require the Hamiltonian to time reversal model. And that uh, 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 this by itself does not say anything about it. No, uh, no, the no, unitary uh, transformation of course involves Hamiltonian, but but this does not say, uh, 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 but but this statement itself does not say anything about whether the Hamiltonian is time reversal invariant or not. That's uh, uh, additional properties. Okay, good. So so then this is how you should for, uh, formulate your effective field theory uh, on this contour. So you start with your UV theory, your microscopic theory, um, on this contour. And on this contour implies we actually have to double your degree freedom. Okay, now you have to double your degree freedom. Because now you have uh, um, uh, um, you have two, two lags. So you have to like one associated with the first lag and side two associated with the second lag. Okay, so, so you have actually double your degree freedom. And, uh, and this roughly minus sign is because the other condo has all this time orientation. And then, and then you pose your boundary condition so that this is a thermal uh, density matrix, say, for example. And uh, then you can imagine, of course, you cannot do this in practice. Then you can imagine you integrate the all massive mode. And then, uh, as we described before, on general principle, you expect in the thermal equilibrium the only gap is mode left. I just had your dynamic mode, the associated with conserved quantities. And then by definition, if there are only gapless modes left, what remaining would be the hydrodynamic action for those variables. Okay? Uh, uh, so that would be hydrodynamic action. And uh, so, so uh, but of course you cannot do this in practice, and, uh, and what we normally do from the effective field theory philosophy is that we do it backwards. We try to specify some symmetries, and then guess what is, uh, and then low down the theory. Okay. Do we, sorry, do we have any implication with uh, S hydrodynamics? Would it be local in time or it would be bi local in time? No, it would be local. Uh, uh, yeah, we expect it should be local. So chi 1 and chi 2 should be sitting at the same time in, in this S hydro. No, uh, 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 it's the, 
it's only one time, right? It's only one time, and both of this, uh, it, it just, yeah, you will see a little bit. We have two sets of variables, there's only one time. So, so it's local in a single time access, yeah. not in the unfolded. Right, right, right. It's local in a single time, yeah. So that's yeah. what you will find by huh? Yeah, what I would say is I have psi 1 the t and psi 2 t. Yes, that's what I mean. You have 1, 2, or 2. Uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and in terms of t, uh, and they're, they're, uh, um, in terms of t, they're local. Okay. Yeah, in terms of this t, they're local. Okay, so but here, in this, so here, uh, if we want to develop, develop effective filtering, now you have to answer the following questions. The first question is what are actually these hydrodynamic variables? Because if you just take your standard, those variables which you write down in equation motion, actually that don't work. You can easily see that don't work to write them into action formism. Because the uh, if you look at the equation motion for them, uh, for example, you might have the idea of fluid level. These are this satisfy the first order differential equations, and then we know uh, it, if something satisfies if some bosonic variable satisfies the first order differential equations, it's very hard to write down the action formula. And uh, and uh, so so the analog situation I, will, I want you to think about is E and N, and the Maxwell equation in terms of E and B is first order in derivatives. But then if you want to write it in terms of an action, it's better to introduce potentials. Okay, so here, so maybe you want to introduce something uh, 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 those are derived from, okay, uh, and those are not fundamental variables. And also we do know those are not fundamental variables because they are, they are more like a macroscopic variables, okay. And, uh, and then you have this specified symmetry, okay, you have this specified symmetry. And then the third is actually you also have to worry about what should be the integration matter? Because I give you this action, and then I say mm -hmm. uh, whether there's some kind of canonical matter you should define for this one. So, uh, so if you want to do this effective field theory, you have to answer this three questions. Okay? So, uh, so that's what I will do. Uh, so I will try to answer this three questions. And just like some quantum hydrodynamics. Sorry? Traditionally, you have a path interview with a quantum field theory, but that doesn't have some quantum hydrodynamics. Yeah, yeah uh, 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 it, you say the path integral here. Yeah, why well, in hydro you don't do any path integral? Uh, right, uh, uh, precisely in hydro you don't do path integral because the, the hydro does not capture those fluctuations. And now if you want to capture those fluctuations, and uh, now you have to do path integral. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but, but I think what you are getting at, uh, 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 there is a very important point here. Uh, actually, oh. this is my, uh, 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 my next point. So in the past, people have tried to derive like Langevin equations yeah. from the quantum mechanics in a part by using Schwinger Kelvin. Right, right, right. So, uh, so there, I forgot the names of B, B, G, Y, K. Well, there's a big yeah, right, right, right. sequence of equations people yeah, derive. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So uh, is your program uh, sort of the analogous to that in the field theory context? Yeah, or it, 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 it's a, uh, it's, it's not quite the same because we are doing the effective field theory framework. Uh, right, uh, in the BBGKY, we start with the most general many particle, right, many particle interactions, many particle interactions, and yeah. then essentially you just write it in terms of a hierarchy of co of uh, correlation functions. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. a, a hierarchical correlation function uh, using this Boltzmann kind of idea uh, okay. uh, using hierarchical functions. Here we will see, uh, but 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 I think we are not going to uh, we will not be able to go to that level detail. Here, that kind of hierarchy will appear. Uh, 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 but it's a little bit different, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so here, let me just first tell you the slogan. It said we will write down effective T theory. I will incorporate all dissipation in fact, okay, and give you an interacting theory of noise. And you can do this at two levels. You can first do this at the level you say this is now uh, forget about quantum mechanics. Let's just think about the classical. Uh, statistical fluctuations, okay? And even if you study with statistical, stas uh, classical statistical fluctuations, then that means we have to do path integral. So, so that's already described, turns out that is described by a super symmetric quantum field theory. And this super symmetric quantum field theory uh, uh, actually have an effective H bar, say given by one of entropy density. Uh, uh, and this is a, 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 a general ground because we know that the statistic, statistical fluctuation is, 
is essentially controlled by one over the normal degree freedom, uh, one over square root normal degree freedom, etc. And essentially, this is controlled by that. And uh, uh, but the interesting thing is that you will see actually this emergence of symmetry. Will you show us that? Yeah, uh, I will show you that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, there's, uh, there, there's some alternative proposal was also uh, proposed by these guys. Um, so this takes a proper Planck equation can be derived from a supersymmetric quantum mechanics. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's action. a yeah, that's a, some kind of baby version of this. And oh, the supersymmetry okay. emerges in the similar kind of philosophy. Uh, 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 but here, uh, uh, it works in a much more longitudinal way. And now, if you want to do hydrodynamics, with also quantum fluctuation incorporated. And now you can imagine this is a little bit more complicated because you already have an H bar. And now there's another H bar. And what do you do? Uh, uh, somehow you have to uh, have to put in a lot of H bar. And uh, and uh, and we don't have actually a full story for this, but there's some hints. Is that this actually gives you some kind of quantum deformed uh, supersymmetric quantum field theory? And it's just the ordinary supersymmetry is deformed into some kind of higher derivative version of supersymmetry, and then and then that deformation will involve in this quantum H bar. Okay, will involve in this quantum. H -bar. In the classical statistical right. description of fluctuations, your path integral has the measure has an e to the i s. Yeah, has i s. I s. Yeah, the yeah, i s. So yeah, but the action is complex. The action is actually complex, mm -hmm. but you have expansion i s. Yes. So I guess I'm confused because I can I have a background in stochastic optimization <laughs> and. The thing that you open with looks like you were going to model with the eco calculus, and then you were going to get the Feynman cat one. Uh, no, 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 and that's not what we are going to do. Okay. No, that's not what we are going to do. So, there, so you're not using that as a model to. No. Do, okay. No. Uh, I'm going to just to to use the uh, the quantum field theory point of view to really derive a part integral, uh, uh, to uh, to postulate the part integral. Uh, okay, uh, so you're not expanding the function. No, no. Okay, so so now let's first go to the first question. What are the dynamic variables? Okay, and uh, 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 so let me just give you a, 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 a first a simple example. Okay, just consider single conserved current, not variable stress sensor. If you have single conserved current, you should already have hydrodynamic variables, uh, or gap based variables associated with the conservation of this. And actually, we roughly know what is the physics of this. And this is the physics. A, a single conserved current is the physics of diffusion. And, uh, and uh, essentially, you should have a single massless mode corresponding to diffusion mode. Okay, uh, and this is. And uh, so, uh, so how do we recover that? Okay, so what we are doing is the following. Uh, 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 again, uh, somehow, even though you are only interested in the classical statistical physics, but it's actually better to start with a quantum field theory. Uh, uh, your genuine quantum field theory. So, so what we are looking at is look at your this following generating functional uh, for your quantum field theory. So we put quantum field theory on this control, and now we write down the generating functional for the two conserved currents uh, for, uh, for conserved currents because now this conserved current <coughs> associated with upper part and the conserved current associated with lower part, and, uh, and then for each of them we introduce a source, okay, uh, uh, with a introduce a source. So that gives me uh, that generating function. Uh, if you take derivative with respect to a, uh, to the two a's, a1, a2, then that gives you various correlation functions. And then combination of those correlation functions can give you retarded green function, give you symmetric green function, uh, various response, uh, give you various kind of response and symmetric green functions, etc. Okay, so, so now let me tell you two properties of this generating functional on uh, general ground. A P just pass ordering, uh, pass ordering along this path. Uh, yeah, yeah, the pass ordering along this path. Sorry, the pass ordering is only in the time. Period. Yeah, only in the time period. Time is going along. Yeah, yeah, time is going along. Yeah, you just say <laughs> two variable always sit behind one variable because of the uh, uh, the arrow. Yeah, just uh, uh, the rule is that two variable always sits be uh, before the one variable. And one variable is time ordered, and two variable is anti-time ordered. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, so that's, uh, that's what it was your initial, initial density matrix, which eventually we will take to be the, uh, the thermal one. Okay, so, so now <coughs> immediately you can conclude from the current conservation is that this thing should be actually gauge variant in terms of those external fields because the current is conserved. Okay. <coughs> And then, then also the second thing is just uh, 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 um, is something which you can check explicitly by looking at free field theory or ABS answers, etc. You just say uh, uh, for generic series, W actually contains non-derivative terms of A1 and A2. And if you combine these two together, you can conclude that W must be non-local in A1 and A2 because uh, uh, because it's the only way uh, 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 because of this. Uh, you can only write down the derivative things uh, to satisfy. Yeah, if you want to write down local W, uh, 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 you can only uh, include derivatives. Okay, and of course the uh, 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 this is expected because be because W should not be local because we have because in this theory there's a single Gaffey's mode corresponding to this conserved current. Uh, as we said, that conserved current should give you Gaffey's mode. If you integrate out the Gaffey's mode, you should get uh, something non-local. And so, uh, 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 so these two are consistent with our expectation. Okay. Yeah. So this is generating functional. This is generating functional. You integrate out everything. You really integrate out everything, and this is generating function only depends on external fields. And uh, and here I'm just emphasizing this generating function cannot be local, and uh, and we do know uh, from here we do know it's non-local, and we also expect it to be non-local because we have a, because we have integrated out the gap is more associated with the conserved current, and uh, then yeah it's uh, W must be non-local, and this non-locality must be due to integrating out this hydro mode, okay. but here I emphasize. It's non local, but non local connected should be only due to integrating out of this hydrodynamic mode. That's the only source of non locality. Okay, that's the only source of non locality. So now you can think about now let's unintegrate this hydrodynamic. But, uh, but our uh, 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 purpose is to uh, obtain the action of the hydro mode. And then we need to unintegrate, uh, 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 unintegrate uh, uh, this back. And normally, when you unintegrate <coughs> something back, it's difficult. But here, I claim, based on these two, this the, the non-locality only due to uh, uh, the integrate of the hydro mode and this conservation, we can actually do that. We can actually uh, 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 unintegrate it. And the guide is the conservation and the locality. So once you unintegrate, unintegrate these modes, the resulting action must be local. Okay. And uh, and uh, and once you keep, once you understand this, and then, then you can just make a guess. So like, I mean, when you think of unintegrating, where like you can think of taking some sort of derivative. So would that imply some sort of correlation function? No, no, no. Unintegrating is not to say it's not a uh, 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 taking derivative. Unintegrating is I want to put the mode back. Here I have integrated out every mode, but now I want to put one mode back. Just add a question on one part that when you talk about effective density, we always try to find the Lagrangian in terms of the symmetry density. Right? Yeah, we'll do that later. We'll do that later. Here, I'm just even talk about variables. Uh, symmetry. Uh, if I don't know the variable, of course, I cannot talk about symmetry. Yeah, yeah of course, I have to specify my variables. What I'm confused about is generally, like, we have an upper level field and we integrate it on the higher energy mode to get the but when countries know that we, we are trying to find, we are trying to go like bottom to top, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, because from the top to bottom yes. you don't know what to do. Yes. Because that corresponding to solve the full series. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, and uh, it, it, it just like QCD. We don't know how to start from the Yang Mill series to derive the pi on Lagrange. And the only way you can derive pi on Lagrange is from the bottom up. It's uh, start from symmetry. And here's the proposal. He said, I will introduce a phi mode. <coughs> this is my hydro mode. And I require 
that my action only depends on B, and B is expressed in terms of A in this way. So, so phi is the uh, uh, Stuckerberg mode uh, uh, for this A in some sense. And, uh, and, uh, and I require this action to be a local action. Okay? So this is our proposal. We just uh, uh, tell you the answer. And I claim this works. It's because... So this is shift symmetry, phi 1 and phi 2? Hmm? Is there a shift symmetry? Yeah, yeah. Phi 1 and phi 2? Yeah, yeah uh, phi is always really to be coupled. Yeah, because you want that's to be... That's original gauge invariant. Yeah, because this is a gapless mode. Okay. And the gapless mode have to be a derivative coupled. And the way, the, the reason to do this, you immediately see that you, when you integrate out the phi 1 and phi 2, oh, this condition is automatically satisfied. Because essentially you just integrate, when you integrate out the phi 1, you just integrate, you say you just integrate out the longitudinal part of A. And then this conservation equation automatically satisfies. And then you require this B to be local. And because the uh, 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 because we said the phi is the only source of non-locality, and then B must be local. And then this is a proposal. And then and then and then uh, yeah, uh, and then you see this is automatic satisfied, and then it's another thing is that you see that the equation motion of phi one, phi two are actually precisely equivalent to uh, apparent conservation. Uh, again, you can see it from here. Uh, and if you take derivative over phi 1, and, uh, and then you can shift to the a1, and then that's corresponding to the current conversation. You just say the equation of motion of phi 1 and phi 2 uh, are automatically equivalent to the water identity uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the current conversation. Is and it uh, that the i will be unique or unique order by order? Uh, the i, then I will just write it down from the uh, symmetry principle. Uh, then I will specify some symmetries, and then uh, uh, with those symmetries, you just write down the most general terms. And then, then of course, there's a consistency check. Is that those most general terms should be consistent with our standard hydrodynamics, and it should not give more interactions or, or more transports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we're supposed to build up this, uh, build up this, uh, this, uh, this integral, right? Right. Sorry. So we have two principles to build up this, this integral. One of them was that the the the, the gauge invariance, and the second one is the non-locality yeah. based on. Yeah. So we already have used both of them already writing in this form, right? Because the way we have written the non-locality, uh, the the, the gauge invariance is evident. Right? Okay. Yes. And and we also use that the i has to be local. Yeah. And, and so we have used both of it. So yes. Even under this condition, I can have a general form. Yeah. Yeah. How how to fix that? Yeah. No, no, that uh, that we we'll talk about. Uh, 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 that's what we will do next. Here I'm only talking about the f uh, fixing the variable, and the, the next step is to fix in the symmetry here, uh, and then we will uh, uh, talk about uh, 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 yeah. What so is the relation between phi and chi on the previous slide? Oh, phi uh, chi is a collection of hydrodynamic. Uh, uh, phi is just chi. And then can you express J mu in terms of phi? J mu, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 once I have written the uh, down this effective action. And then you just take the ratio with respect to A, and then you get to the J mu in terms of phi. But not only the, if you take the derivative of phi with respect to A mu, it will have something complicated, with, which also includes A mu itself, right? Yeah, then you can say that A mu is equal to zero. Uh, a mu is a background field, right? In the end, you set it equal to zero. Uh, a mu is just a generating function. Uh, 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 a mu is just use, is to help you to derive what is the current also oh. help you to derive a correlation function. Yeah, just the same thing. Uh, 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 when you want to derive the stress tensor of a field theory, uh, you couple to center field, you take the with respect to H, and then you get the stress tensor. Yes? So are the B means the, the variables in your effective action, or the phi's? Phi's. So what you wrote as general I as a of B as right. a local action, but what you're really saying is I as a is a local action which is a function of what del mu phi I. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But but I find it useful to include the external field because they combine uh, because dynamic field and the external field combine in the way. Okay, so 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 uh, so now you can do more serious things the, now you can do the stress tensor. Another idea is very simple. It, it, it's the same. So now you just for the stress tensor, you just put it on the curved space time. And now, 
for these two different lags, you put from the different external metrics. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, different external metrics. So, uh, and then that can give you the generation functional uh, for the uh, for the stress tensor. And we, now we also know how to. Uh, and again, uh, the generation of the stress tensor means that this should be invariant now the diffeomorphism, independent diffeomorphism of the two uh, uh, two branches. Um, okay, and now we can again unintegrate the hydro modes. Okay. Uh, the principle is the same, and now we know what to do. Because of what we said, that the 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 hydro mode is essentially in the in the in the in the case of the current, the hydro mode is the stackable field for your gauge field, okay, for external gauge field. And uh, and uh, when you do the stress tensor, and then the then the hydro mode will be the stackable field for the corresponding diffeomorphism. So that means you just need to promote your space-time coordinates into dynamical variable. Okay? So, so now let me emphasize two things. When I write down the diffeomorphism, okay, the diffeomorphism associated with uh, uh, each thing have an independent diffeomorphism. Okay? Uh, uh, each metric have an independent diffeomorphism. Uh, uh, that uh, means associated with this one uh, have independent diffeomorphism. So, so that means you just promote this first time coordinate dynamical. So this corresponding thing, you just promote the space time, space time coordinate for the two lags into dynamical variables. Okay. And now you write it as follows: you introduce this H I, this H A B, you promote the space time coordinate say for G one, G one is for the first lag into dynamical variables as from function of sigma uh, and you perform uh, a diffeomorphism transformation uh, to go to this H. And I also introduce a diatonic mode and this will be interpreted later uh, as a temperature. What, okay. is, what is sigma? Mm -hmm. and what, how many sigmas is that? Yeah, I mean, I will talk about sigma. So now, yeah, I just, now once you put once you put this diffeomorphism dynamical, <laughs> diffeomorphism dynamical, then that means you necessarily need to introduce an emergent space time. And that is this sigma. Okay? And this sigma have the same uh, number of space time dimension as your, uh, your physical space time. And, and now the physical space time you separate into two, and each of them is a separate function of, the, uh, of your, uh, uh, this emergent space time. And, uh, and this mapping, is your dynamic variable. Uh, okay? Is it necessary to sigma have the exact same number of dimensions yeah. of the space time? Yeah. Can one can not principally no, 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 no. need to be the lower no, 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 no. This is the promoting and so it's the same. No, they just promote the promotion into a dynamic variable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then they're always the same. There's no freedom in that. Um, okay? Good? So now again, you write down a local action in terms of this H variable, and, uh, and this introduction uh, and this combination just ensures it ensures that it's always uh, uh, satisfied. Uh, a different moment is always satisfied, and we also uh, uh, ensure that this X equation motion are actually equivalent to the border identity of the conservation of the stress tensor. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, so we uh, uh, so we inter yeah uh, so that's our hydrodynamic mode. It's so our uh, proposal for the hydrodynamic mode. So now let me talk about the interpretation of sigma. Can I? Yeah, I'm just trying to put it in my head. So in the first part, you talked about the current. Yeah. Effectively, you were, I mean, it, it's associated with the gauge transformation. So yeah. Effectively, you made the gauge parameter as a dynamical variable. Yeah, yeah. And here you're talking about diffeomorphisms, and therefore you're using the diffeo parameter for that. Exactly. And that necessarily uh, it needs to introduce additional uh, emergent space time. Because in order to make the space time variable to be dynamical, you have to introduce something else. And so that is the sigma. But this is sort of like we do effective theory of solitons, right? I mean, the. Yeah, 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 it's a little bit like that. It's a little bit like that. You, uh, you promote that uh, 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 the location of the soliton into a dynamical variable. And uh, 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 yeah, 
Okay, so, so now let me give you an interpretation of sigma. It turns out sigma has a very simple physical interpretation. So I will interpret, so sigma will have the time component and the spatial component. And I will interpret the spatial component of sigma as label the fluid element. So if you think about following the fluid, then the sigma i would be the core moving coordinates for the fluid. Okay, just follow from the fluid. And the sigma zero would be the core moving time. It's the internal time uh, uh, for this fluid. And so that would be this. And now, now there will be a very simple physical interpretation of what this mapping is. So this mapping just gives you the physical, the motion of this physical. Introducing the diffeomorphism as a dynamic variable, you say you recover the Lagrangian formula. Yes, I have some vague memory for Lagrangian formula. There is some math from maybe in the number of these. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, people have been written down this high gloss, actually, 1911 paper. He was written in, in, in something in this kind of language. Yeah. I remember some review more of physics, but not 1980. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People have been doing this throughout the. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, yeah, so, as related to the Torias question, and then this provides a natural way to define your velocity. You define velocity, just take the derivative of this, and you normalize it so that u square equals to minus 1. Okay? And you, normal, uh, uh, you, you take the derivative, you normalize it. And so then, what, what is b? Small b? Small b, uh, or b is just a normalization factor. Uh, so that this has the uh, 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 u square equal to minus one. Yeah. So this is essentially just modulus of this. And then I will also interpret this tau. I, I introduce the dilatonic mode. I will interpret this tau as my temperature, not uh, local temperature. And this is not very intuitive, uh, uh, but it works. Uh, uh, but let me just give you a little bit uh, a better intuition about it. In some sense, the in the fluid, the local temperature, in some sense, defines a local energy scale. And, uh, and this tau is a dilatonic mode which essentially defines your local scale. And uh, so, so it's natural to associate this with the temperature. Yeah, so this is a rough intuition. And uh, then the chemical potential, uh, you can also generalize the charge fluid, and the chemical potential would be just the, uh, essentially the pullback of this B mu to this fluid space time. And when you pull back this B mu, uh, B to the fluid space time, that essentially that's what you get. Okay. So there is a, an extra constraint on your embedding or your uh, x mu, yeah. namely that the resulting v mu is in fact time -like. Uh That that's right. Yeah, yeah. And probably the positivity constraint on u. Yeah, that's the constraint that uh, u should be one, right? right? Yeah. That's right. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be indeed this mapping. He said this should be time -like. That's right. So up to this point is the constraint that we can't have crossing fluids has that been imposed, or does that come later? Yeah, uh, 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 that's also a good point. Uh, 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 I will talk about that. Mm -hmm. I will talk about something related to that kind of question. Mm -hmm. the, the formalism assumes a la laminar motion, right? This formalism already assumes that you have different mechanisms. Yeah, I think that's a good question, uh, uh, which we can discuss. Uh, 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 yeah. Well, it assumes different variants, but not necessarily that. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, and then we go to the... Uh, 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 there's a next thing that uh, we're going to describe. I think we discussed this question uh, 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 with, uh, with that thing will be a bit. Yeah, so let me quickly say this is actually not completely new, this kind of variable, because throughout the history, uh, uh, people have been using this Lagrangian kind of uh, coordinate. So this high clause already were using a inverse of this. Uh, he was using the sigma i as a function of x, and he was writing down his uh, uh, fluid, uh, idea of fluid action. And also uh, some covariant version, including even covariant version, <coughs> the tau in, in 1954 have used that, or, or, or also maybe many other people. And even as recent as 2005, at Bosque, have all they have written down something. And uh, um, yeah, uh, and then uh, the Nico, uh, 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 Nico and Sun, they, uh, uh, they they showed actually uh, uh, this version of the yeah. Uh, then they show actually the single copy of this kind of thing actually arise uh, a natural holography. And uh, and also uh, 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 people talk about double cross extension. Yeah, but the, inter uh, the introduction of this tau as a temperature is actually new, and the way to uh, to to interpret them as this uh, Starkberg modes, uh, 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 the way to uh, uh, this way to motivate them. Uh, so now let's talk about symmetries. 
Okay, so now we have identified the variable. Now we can do the symmetries. You, you, in order to write down the action, you still have to specify what the symmetries. And uh, uh, so, so, uh, uh, so we have to write this down. So, so, so what do you do? So first thing to emphasize is that the, this action is defined in the full space time. Because everything is pulled back to the full space time. This H is defined in this full, full space time. And again, remind you, this corresponding to the fluid elements. And now, I will, and then this interpretation I claim will naturally suggest the following symmetries, okay? So here is the first symmetry we are going to impose. And, uh, and the imposing of those symmetries are the key, are the key physics, uh, whether you think it's corresponding to diamond flow or whether they can intersect, etc. Uh, 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 so that, uh, uh, all those questions are encoded in here. I can tell you those symmetries work, and, uh, and then we can discuss what the symmetry means physically, okay? So the first, he said, I want to do is I want this thing to be uh, the action to be diffeomorphic invariant purely on the special diffeomorphism. And uh, 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 for given time. So here it's not depend on time. Uh, 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 the reason is the following at the given time, I should be able to re arbitrarily relabel my fluid elements. Okay, because fluid elements can, uh, 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 I should be able to uh, arbitrarily re uh, relabel them. Because the fluid, there's no shape, etc., I should be able to, and there should not be any constraints in my relabeling uh, my fluid elements. This is Sorry, it's not obvious from this explanation that you should take a slice at uh, constant sigma zero rather than constant x yes. zero. No, no, no. no uh, sigma zero is my, uh, is the time, uh, it's a core moving frame uh, uh, for the fluid, right? So I just do for the fluid. But if I, if I imagine each piece of liquid as, as a relativistic particle, and sigma zero is a proper time of each particle. Yeah, uh, 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 I'm going to talk about that. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that a little bit separate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 then that look at my next equation, then we can talk about this as a whole. Just, just one, so, like, one can, think of, can, can one think of it this way that if I fix the right time, and then the fluid locally has to be, uh, the, the way we define go moving frame has to be moving and so forth. Right? Um, uh, this is not really, uh, 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 this is just a labeling, it's just arbitrary relabeling. Yeah. Yeah, let me just say the next thing is that we should be able to allow this time, arbitrary reparation of this time for each separate fluid element. Okay? And, uh, and so here, uh, I allow this to depend on sigma zero because I should allow the reparation of my time. But now I also allow this to depend on sigma i. That means each fluid element should be able to have its own time. And if I relabel their time, uh, a physics should not depend on that. Okay? Uh, 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 that's another thing. And so these are the two things I'm imposed. And, uh, and all the physics regarding fluids are incorporated in here. All the physics regarding fluids are recorded here. Uh, uh, for example, if you do solids, if you do liquid crystal, uh, uh, then it would be different sets of equations. And, uh, and uh, I claim these are the defining equations for the fluids. So, uh, these symmetries are exactly in terms of polyacrylic action. Does the polyacrylic action have exactly symmetry? No, the polyacrylic action, no. The polyacrylic action is full diffeomorphism. Yeah, it's full diffeomorphism. Okay, good. And then, if you have a charged fluid, then I will need to impose additional symmetry. If you have a charged fluid, then I will. Again, if you look at each fluid element, then each fluid element has a global symmetry, and each fluid element should be able to do a, do a phase rotation by itself. But different fluid elements, their phase should, there's no need for them to be correlated. So I allow such a gauge transformation, which does not depend on time, because it's a global transformation, so it cannot depend on time, but it can depend on the fluid coordinates. Uh, 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 and, uh, and since I only have single fluid elements, so, so this should be a diagonal uh, uh, gauge transformation for, uh, for each field. Okay? Why are you writing that in terms of V rather than in terms of phi? Yeah. You, can, you can write in terms of phi. Because V is not a dynamical field. Right? No, the V <coughs> contains a dynamical field. Oh, right, but you're just saying that phi can be adjusted by a constant which is sigma i dependent. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Why is it diagonal in one and two? Yeah, it's because I only have single fluid element, it's just the mapping of this black, uh, fluid element to the two, uh, uh, two physical space-time. 
And so if I make a face, same face rotation here, uh, 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 will be registered in both of them. Uh, 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 it's just the picture. Uh, it's a picture um, of this one. Uh, if I make a, a rotation here, it should be registered at the same time in both of them. And, and so that's essentially the reflection of this uh, 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 rotation. Uh, uh, this space. So you've allowed separate x1s and x2s. So yeah. You're allowed to, when you're integrating over your, all your different fluctuations, you allow the, the 1 and 2 fluctuations to be. Right independent why shouldn't the same be true for the yeah yeah but this is something additional right uh, uh, uh this is something additional this is something uh, uh i'm arguing uh, that each fluid element should have the freedom to make some phase rotation and uh, uh, and this is only a single phase rotation this is not uh, there's no two parameters uh, it's only single parameter. anyway so so the claim no matter how you integrate those symmetries the claim is that those images work magically uh, in the following sense. Uh, and you have questions? Is that the full star? Because when I saw uh, this, uh, you also have symmetries for x as a function of c, right? No. No, uh, no x, x, you may define the general characteristics uh, what class of things you integrate in your path in the door. Uh, mm -hmm. You may specify that. Uh, and But there's no additional uh, thing uh, uh, x in terms of sigma. Mm -hmm. So yeah. x is a scalar? Yeah, x is a scalar, scalar as, a, as a function of sigma. And then related to the question whether x is single valued, multiple valued, and there's a tricky question related to that. That's related to the what class of things you should allow in your path in the goal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to interpret the, the, this last line. It says that you can uh, shift twice your Stickle bar parameter to the one symmetry. Yeah. But why you cannot uh, shift your Stickle parameter for uh, no, this is a phase. No, no, no. This is U1 symmetry. Yeah, this is U1 symmetry. Yeah, yeah. But why you cannot do the same shift for given matrices? So oh, I would expect I would have similar uh, rules for X that you can shift X. So that's an analog of those things. Yeah, that's an analog of those things. Uh, the X is uh, uh, those will induce the transformation on the X. See, X is already a scalar uh, right. as a <laughs> yeah. function of sigma. Yeah, yeah. So, so x is a scale of them. If you make those transformations, then we induce transformation on the x. It's an analog of that. It's an analog of that. It's not like having a and the phi so that you make a copy. Special phi for one. Special phi. Oh no, no, no. That's just you impose it. That's just a definition. That's just a definition. Uh, uh, the velocity is the velocity in your physical space time. It's just a definition. Uh, so it's a, a the, the coordinates field has nothing to do with no. 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 uh, uh, the sigma. Uh, those symmetries, I so think, will be the same. Like the even into the non-relativistic space variable, yeah. which is yeah. Uh, uh, I just want to clarify those yeah, yeah, the sigmas are the same. But this is the various shifts of phi can be compensated so by. So you can think of the shifts of symmetry in terms of space-time transformation. What we have done here, but principally there are some 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 inherent field symmetries, right? Like for example, this of this axioms have an inbuilt matrix. Right. Sorry, sorry. And this X and the which are the fields. You have these basic. They have internal inbuilt matrix. In. No, so no, 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 no. Why? Space time. So yeah. that's so how we're going to do it. So we're going to do it. Right. Right. So we're going to do it. Right. 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 Invariance mm -hmm. under yes. the changes in the Yeah, there, has, there is a delta x also. Yeah, which yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. there's gauge fixing. Yeah. Yes. The same. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so let me just move on. And those symmetries really do magic for you. Really do magic for you. Because there's a very non trivial right. thing here. There's a very non trivial thing here. Because I'm introducing this x, introducing this. Introducing this phi, introducing this tau, and the very non-trivial constraint is that in the regime you should reproduce hydrodynamics. For example, if you write down classical equation motion, they should precisely their equation motion should 
appear in a way only through those microscopic variables like velocity, uh, uh, the temperature, and the chemical potential. Not through, uh, uh, yeah, just at the equation motion level, you, they, they somehow to be consistent with the standard hydrodynamics, that the equation motion they must be written, must be able to written them in terms of original variables. Uh, 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 not those uh, x and uh, uh, phi, those variables. And that's a highly, highly non-trivial constraint. Uh, it, it, with those symmetries, it just precisely happens. And that precisely ensures that your equation motion can be just expressed in terms of standard variables. And then that, that tells you that really is the fluid. It is the fluid symmetry. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it essentially, that recovers uh, the standard formulation of hydrodynamics Modular those phonological constraints. Okay, uh, 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 we have not talked about those phonological constraints, uh, 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 but this already recovers that. Okay, good. And uh, this is actually quite interesting because now doing hydrodynamics become a problem doing differential geometry. I've specified some different morphism for you. You just write down the geometric invariant satisfy those symmetries. And the, uh, I say you write down covariant derivatives, rich tensor, etc., uh, torsion, and some funny differential geometry. It turns out that each of them corresponding to some hydrodynamic tensor. For example, this torsion actually corresponding to vorticity. Uh, if you translate into the uh, the beta u uh, mu y will uh, become vorticity. And uh, and this uh, rich tensor uh, actually here actually there's two independent rich tensor, uh, two rich tensor. Anyway, the rich tensor is translated into some other variable, etc. And, uh, and, uh, and so, so the hydrodynamics essentially become a problem with differential geometry, uh, some kind of unconventional differential geometry. So in the normal story, this would be the full story. In, in the normal situation, if you just have a standard effective field theory, this would be a full story. But here, it's a little bit different. Here, we're actually doing this uh, uh, closed time pass. And then there are some additional constraints uh, come from this closed time pass. And uh, for example, uh, the generating function should have uh, the following properties. Only uh, uh, the first is that if you do a complex conjugate, okay, then that corresponding to reverse the direction of that contour, then that should co uh, corresponding to you you change these two. Uh, so this is the constraint you must satisfy. Uh, otherwise, your attractive field theory does not make sense. And another interesting constraint can be uh, formulated as a, 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 a consequence of the thermal ensemble. It's so-called the KMS condition. So-called KMS condition. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether people are here are familiar with the KMS condition. So, so, so KMS condition is it's very simple at two-point function level. At two-point function level is very simple. And so if you have a thermal correlation function, or one or two, and you can rewrite this as the following. And this just become O1 shifted by, by minus I beta, or by, I, by I beta, okay? And then you can just rewrite this as phase exponential beta I H O2 and O1 uh, uh, I beta, okay? So, so you shift one of them by I beta, you change the order. And then you can do this for general endpoint functions. Anyway, the, uh, 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 this is just a constraint, both the trace and the thermal. Uh, the physics, and uh, then the people actually uh, people doing constructive quantum field theory have been trying very hard to prove theorems like if all your correlation functions satisfy KMS condition, then that's equivalent to your uh, uh, doing the, in the thermal ensemble. And so this is very important because if you write down effective field theory, how do we know we are uh, 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 this effective field theory corresponding to some finite temperature theory? But, but if you can satisfy KMS condition, then that will ensure that. Uh, that will ensure that your knowledge effective theory really captures some, uh, uh, some knowledge aspect of the thermal field theory. And so this is crucial. And actually, uh, uh, important subtlety is that the KMS condition can actually not be imposed by itself. It's because the KMS condition, you see, already a two-point function you change the order of this. So, so it's not a symmetry of the correlation functions. It read one set of correlation functions with another set of correlation functions. And so, so only when you combine with PT, with the time reversal, and then this becomes a symmetry. 
and, uh, and then you can write the symmetry of a single generating function is something like this. And, uh, and then this is like some kind of D2 symmetry uh, satisfied by your generating function. So you want your uh, generating function to satisfy this D2 symmetry. Yeah. Then you try to define a yeah. 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 But here we cannot do that. Here we just define. Uh, 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 here we define a low energy factory field, so we don't have this time circle. Uh, we are doing it in, in the real time, uh, and uh, and so uh, so that have to be imposed dynamically. In the in the symmetry way. Yeah. 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 Not dynamically, just as some kind of symmetry. And then there's another condition which I call the normalization condition or unitary condition. Yeah, if you put the external source to be the same on the QNAC, then the generating function to be exactly zero because of the uh, you you DAC are the same uh, when you take the trace and then they go away and then the trace row is just equal to zero. Uh, trace row equal to one, so this number equal to zero. So anyway, so 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 uh, so you also have to impose those conditions. So, uh, so now let me just do it quickly. Uh, uh, actually, I'm uh, 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 already doing 90 minutes. Um, so, so, so I claim this reflectivity condition is actually very impo uh, uh, easy to impose. And you just require your, uh, your action uh, to satisfy that. Uh, 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 it, just your action satisfies some, uh, 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 some reflection uh, 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 condition. They take the star and again exchange them. But, but there's a very non trivial consequence of it. Because this is. This requires this to be, uh, uh, action to be complex. And actually, th that means if an action is complex, if you put in the exponential is, if you put in the exponential is, for complex action, you put the exponential is, then that means the imaginary part of s must be positive definite. Otherwise, you don't make sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the parking does not make sense. Yeah. It turns out this is very crucial. This condition ensures viscosity, uh, conductivity, those transport coefficients to be non-negative. Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, actually works beautifully. Uh, uh, that this is actually complex. Okay, and then the uh, impose this KMS condition is actually very hard. It's a very hard condition. You can imagine that uh, 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 this is a very complicated condition. To uh, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, so anyway, there's some resolution which is very non. Uh, uh, it's a very uh, uh, yeah. What we call a, a local KMS condition. So uh, so you can imagine somehow you want your effective field theory to satisfy some some D two symmetry. So that generating function to satisfy this D two symmetry. Uh, 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 this is actually not easy to do. Anyway, so uh, so let me not go into details. Uh, 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 let me just claim that we have a way to do it. Uh, uh, the key is to do for the contact terms. Uh, anyway, uh, 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 so let me just uh, uh, do this part quickly. Uh, uh, the claim is that you, uh, we have a proposal. You can impose the D2 symmetry, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, in various cases, uh, we don't have a proof yet. Uh, we have checked in various cases imposing uh, uh, this D2 symmetry, which we call local KMS condition, uh, uh, actually can make that satisfied. Uh, 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 in more cases, we have checked. And, uh, and this turns out to be crucial because once you impose this D2 condition, it turns out you actually recover all the condition from the entropy constraint. So all the condition from the entropy constraint actually can be derived from here. Uh, and just some D2 symmetry uh, uh, in your action. And also actually, uh, 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 actually uh, yeah, and you also actually, uh, uh, including also this uh, uh, unsacred relation, just uh, all come out from that. And actually, interestingly, this also gives you some new constraints on the equation motion from nonlinear ensemble relations, because ensemble relations can also be generalized to nonlinear order. And actually, they also include some nonlinear ensemble relations, which was not known before, uh, at least uh, was not known before in the hydrodynamics. And uh, for, uh, for example, at the second derivative order, and this, can, uh, uh, this then will lead to non trivial relations. Okay. And now let me just quickly say uh, uh, where the supersymmetry comes from. So supersymmetry, so now you have to impose this condition, uh, essentially some kind of unitary condition. And this can be understood as some kind of condition on your integration measure. Because of the, because of the, uh, uh, yeah. 
And uh, uh, for the connection on the integration map, uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, essentially the same when you put two of these backgrounds to be the same, uh, your W should be trivial, okay? Uh, uh, your W should be trivial. And so now let me, uh, 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 so this is essentially some kind of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, condition on your, on, on your integration matrix. Yeah, so let me just now use a simplified notation and call my dynamical variable just in chi. <laughs> I uh, two set of the and background field that just called them phi one two. It turns out that this condition can be imposed easily by by requiring by introducing some ghost fields. Okay, introduce a fermionic partner for each your dynamic field introduce some a uh, 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 ghost field. And then you require when you set the phi one into the phi two, your background field to be the same, require your action to satisfy some DIST symmetry. And uh, yeah, that's the standard trick you do. If you want to impose some condition on your measure, you do BIST symmetry. And then that works. Uh, and then you can write down the, uh, 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 when the phi 1 is phi 2, uh, you can write down some BIST transformation. And then that guarantees that condition is always satisfied to all loop order. And now, here's something interesting. But, but I emphasize, despite that the action is topological, uh, it's the BIST mm -hmm. trivial, but this is actually another topological theory because of the uh, the observables are not invariant. So the stress tensor uh, is only uh, some particular combination of the variable uh, should be uh, should be zero. And uh, anyway, yeah. And so the whole theory is not topological. But now there's something similar, uh, uh, interesting happening. Is that it turns out that given a bosonic action, the BIST symmetry actually does not completely fix the fermionic part. Okay, you can always write it down, but uh, uh, but it's actually not unique. And then that uh, causes some ambiguity. Then, uh, then you have ambiguity in the fermionic part. But then what do you do? Uh, then you first try to do at the quadratic order. Then you see actually uh, actually at the quadratic order, uh, such kind of ambiguity does not arise. Uh, uh, say if you just uh, say do small expansion, then at, at the quadratic order, turns out that the PST uniquely fixes the fermionic action. And then you find the following surprise. Then you find that at the quadratic level, after you have imposed this uh, uh, KMS condition, local KMS condition, and then with this PIST symmetry, now there's an emergent fermionic symmetry. Now there's a new symmetry, uh, 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 now there's a new fermionic symmetry emerges. Uh, as a consequence, we have imposed this local KMS condition. And uh, that super symmetry, uh, and that fermionic symmetry, Commutes with your original BIST symmetry into such an algebra. Into such an algebra. And the, uh, and the reason this time to appear mm -hmm. is because of the, uh, if you are familiar with the fluctuation dissipation theorem, uh, the, uh, uh, this is also in something uh, uh, appears there, this time beta omega. Anyway, so, uh, so, so with that thing, uh, you, uh, you have this. And that, uh, the, 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 that algebra is a little bit weird. That's actually a full, fully. Uh, uh, quantum algebra, uh, so there's h bar there, uh, uh, because the uh, h bar always comes with the beta zero uh, uh, in, in, in quantum field theory. But you can also take h bar goes to zero limit. Oh, also you find that the cu current transform as you reduce the much rate under this algebra. Okay, uh, so the, your your stress tensor and your conserved current actually they transform under you, you reduce the much rate. So now you can take a classical limit. In the classical limit, and then uh, this time essentially just become this one. And you, uh, you have the standards for symmetric algebra in the time direction. Uh, a standard for symmetric algebra in the time direction. And, uh, and uh, you also show when you take h bar goes zero limit, the passing integral actually does not collapse. And the passing integral actually survives. And you still have a finite passing integral. Uh, you know, when you take h bar goes to zero limit. It's just, it, it's just because you still have statistical fluctuation as, as expected. So, so actually, we conjecture that in the classical limit, that the supersymmetry actually maybe can fix the uh, 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 the fermionic part of the action uniquely. Okay. Uh, so previously, if you only impose BIST, then then you have some freedom. But, but now at the cubic level, now you have some freedom. But now we impose fur further supersymmetry, and then that can uh, uh, fix uniquely. It's the same appearance of supersymmetry that it's uh, philosophically it's rather similar. It's all as a consequence of this uh, 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 fluctuation dissipation. KMS uh, condition uh, is it, it, 
is essentially the, uh, 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 the most general version of the partition in this case. That's right. Yeah, philosophically it's the same, but the details, uh, 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 details of course, are much more complicated. Okay. Much more non-trivial. Am I understanding this right? You, um, you, you chose to introduce these ghost fields yeah. a, as a way to enforce that, uh, what you call the unitarity condition. Yeah. And, um, and then, you, then you observe that you have, and then and you construct the BRS key symmetry which you want to mod out by, but it's not a full topological theory, as you said. That's in right. In some sense, you have twice as many ghosts as you need. And so you notice that there's another fermionic symmetry. And are we supposed to treat, are we supposed to say that the, this effective theory is the, is only the, we mod out by supersymmetry transformation? That is to say, in some sense... It's not quite mod by supersymmetry transformation because the, um, um, it just, uh, it, 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 it just, uh, uh, the, the supersymmetry just appears, just emerges, uh, laterally, somehow, as a consequence of the uh, of this local KMS condition, and uh, and then uh, 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 that's a quadratic story. And then at the cubic level, then you have some ambiguities from the B BST. Then you can just impose this supersymmetry to fix those. So terms. I'm just trying to ask how we're supposed to think about this. this yeah, I don't have. Now you have your effective action, but you 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 more or less doubled your your field content by adding in those. That's right. But you've added this extra symmetry. That's right. And is the statement that as long as you look only at supersymmetric observables or something like this, yeah. that that you that essentially removes those ghosts to be defeated and imposes that unitarity condition? Uh, so, uh, so, or normalization? Yeah, uh, uh, so first, that the, uh, uh, this is a, a, a very key question. So, uh, so first, the, 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 that, normaliz the, that normalization condition is always imposed. Once you have a BST symmetry, just guaranteed to impose. That gar uh, 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 yeah, that unitarity just imposed. No matter how you deal with these fermions, that already imposed. And then in this theory, there's a canonical set of the observables. It's just the, uh, uh, your current and your stress tensor. We may say... And you're saying... Yeah, uh, there are two kinds of philosophy. So one philosophy, you say, let's not worry about the ghost. Uh, maybe they are non-physical. And uh, uh, the, the only variable I allow in this theory are just my stress tensor and the current. I just compute them. I see. So it's something like, uh, is there a ghost number current in this theory? Um, yeah, uh, 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 at least at the level we wrote down, uh, it's, it's uh, um, yeah, there's some kind of uh, uh, ghost always come uh, uh, quadratically. I don't see, yeah. It, it so you're saying you, one thing you could do is just impose the delta symmetry, the BRSD symmetry, yeah. and restrict your observable to ghost number zero or something like that. No, we don't even impose to ghost number zero. We just look at the, the stress tensor and the current. Because the stress and the current we, uh, uh, we can define uh, ambiguously. Uh, and then we just restrict to those variables. So that's a subset of your space of states or space of operators. Yeah. Which don't include that. That's all I know. No, no, no. That also includes the ghost because <coughs> the stress sensor now also includes the ghost. Yeah, because once you add the ghost, you have to re reevaluate your stress tensor, and then they, they will inc include the ghost. And ghost will come quadratically. Uh, 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 ghost will enter in those quantities. And uh, and the one. I uh, see. I actually I don't know the f uh, answer, the full answer to uh, uh, I think to the question you are going uh, 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 you are raising. I mean, just say there are two philosophy. One philosophy is that uh, uh, maybe there are three possibilities. One possibility is that I only consider the stress tensor and the current, which I can define them uh, uh, ambiguously, and I only compute them. I guess what Philip was asking, like in usual. Yeah, but yeah. One second. Yeah. I think it's very important. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, I may talk about three scenarios. I think my scena three scenarios should all include all your questions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the first scenario is I only consider stress sense and current. Uh, and that's it, because this is the effective field theory. I'm only worried about the conserved quantities. And uh, I don't worry about the other things. And, uh, and that's, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the retirement conditions on the matrix satisfied, I don't have to worry about the ghost. So this is the first philosophy. And the second philosophy, maybe there's a larger set of variables. Uh, I can define this theory, uh, uh, like in the standard story, maybe I can describe some cohomology uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the larger sets of uh, observable I can define this theory mm -hmm. and then make sense of that larger set of uh, observables. At the moment I don't know how to do that mm -hmm. and I'm not sure whether that's possible. And uh, there's a third philosophy 
He said maybe those fermions are actually physical. So now you have a genuine fit. Uh, now you have a genuine uh, uh, supersymmetry. Maybe those fermions are physical. Uh, 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 because if you naively look at the Lagrangian, there can be process which two sound modes collide, can create two ghost, uh, two fermionic modes. Uh -huh. So in the standard effective field theory, then you would say this is another process. Uh, unless you somehow you get rid of this kind of process because of the two fermion mode. Anyway, so so I don't know the answer to the uh, to the second or third question, but so uh, uh, those are possibilities. That yeah. That in, uh, in standard hydrodynamics, there would be hidden uh, uh, effective degrees of freedom. Which yeah. Is a fermionic mode. That's right. Yeah, that would be the interpretation. Yeah. But yeah. people haven't noticed before just because yeah. they are. Yeah, so yeah. that's right. That's right. We are, they were always only pair produced, yeah. uh, so their so th their signature will be very subtle. Yeah, yeah. and so I don't know which scenario is right, but the most conservative con uh, scenario is that you just can uh, just compute the stress tensor and the current. I I'm sure that will uh, be right. Yeah. Uh, I just have a question about the form of the action. Yeah, you heard it as just a Q exact piece. Could you also write a Q closed piece? So the super, the PRC symmetry doesn't fix the fermionic portion, but maybe there's a few closed pieces missing. Or uh, no, no. Uh, once you impose this uh, uh, super symmetry, and then the fermionic piece will be uh, uh, be fixed. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm agreeing to be fixed. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, 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 Um, yeah, so, uh, so you have to impose the boundary conditions. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 what you uh, 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 ask is right, is that the, in principle, if you look at the most general solutions, uh, they may have solutions which uh, have the opposite sign. I say the diffusion uh, 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 yeah. have opposite sign from the standard diffusion. Mm -hmm. And indeed, uh, uh, you, uh, you have two sets of equations. One side is standard diffusion, uh, and the other side is the opposite side from the standard diffusion. And uh, but what would do is that the, uh, you, when you impose the standard uh, boundary condition uh, for the classical equation motion, then, th then that wrong side of the equation uh, just have zero solution. You should choo choose, yeah. Yeah, because I was saying, because you said when you do pass integer, then you get the wrong sign. Yeah. And those equations would tend to grow. That means that if you ask the equations to the wrong solution, they will grow. Oh no 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 no. Oh 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 no. I think I misunderstood your question. So, so the so here you require you require that the uh, 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 the caution of your action. So that that part is positive, uh, 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 an active definite. Yeah, but at the classical level you don't need that because the classical level only says you variation of function. You see. Right. So you could have both solutions. I'm saying that the, this requirement comes only when you look at things. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So the fluctuations will grow when you are in the wrong solution because the action will start positive. So, uh, so if you, it's just like if you just write down equation motion, if you just write down equation motion, I cannot say whether uh, uh, a viscosity uh, have to be positive. And, uh, and in order to, uh, for viscosity to be positive, you have to impose additional uh, constraints. Uh, in the standard story, you said you have to use this entropy constraint. Yeah. And uh, here, uh, we don't use entropy constraint, we say this from the consistency of the path in the curve. But that's, that's the consistency means that if you integrate over fluctuations, uh, you don't get infinite. So that's, that's right. But that means that fluctuations will grow for the opposite or something like that. The solution is unstable. This setup is having to go with kind of an initial condition. I think what I think you guys are really <laughs> <laughs> he, he sets an initial condition, that's where he starts his control right now. Right? And the question is, does then the path integral over that this whole double time control to the final answer? And you won't get a final answer if there's a control Yeah, but that means some physical effect that you have a but you can put the wrong diffusion at the initial condition and then instead of doing the wrong diffusion you start messing up or get up the stuff. 
Instead of that, she was minus infinity in Virgin Verona. She could have inserted it formally at two equals plus infinity and done the contour in the, in the long time there. And then she would have needed the opposite sign. Okay, but that's going back. Yeah, uh, 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 no, no, but I'm saying, if you want to know, suppose you have this solution which has a diffusion in the opposite way where entropy is in the U, and you put that as initial condition. Instead of getting that solution, fluctuations will grow, and you will go back to the solution where, uh, like this phase theorem that you can put, uh, mm -hmm. I can put all the molecules in yeah, no, the initial see. condition that goes to the corner, but any small imperfection, any small fluctuation will destroy that graphic solution you will go back to the end of the growing. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, I quite understand your question. I'm just saying in in my action I will have this kind of term. Uh, 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 I have this kind of uh, uh, path in the door and X is dynamic rival. Then I just require A to be greater than zero. And then and uh, and then this is this will guarantee that the equation motion level uh, this will guarantee the equation motion level the entropy does not decrease. Yeah, but why do you put you could put uh, a negative? No, no, no. I want to put a positive because uh, I want particle to be redefined. Yeah, but so, no. What I'm saying, suppose I look at just the equation of motion, it doesn't matter because I can put both. Yeah, but the equation of motion is not but enough, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but no. But then the idea is that if you have the wrong solution, then with the equation of motion with opposite sign, yeah, then this x will grow. Yeah. Those fluctuations will grow and will destroy this structure. So mm -hmm. Any small fluctuation mm -hmm. will grow. Right. That's the physical meaning of that thing. Okay, that's what I was saying. Oh, 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 yeah, right. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, 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 it, 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 it's right, yeah. Uh, 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 there's two ways to think about it. One way just you want to mathematically make the path integral way defined. Uh, you, you say maybe there's some other way to understand it from the equation module point of view. That's what you are saying? Yeah, that if you put the, the, you try to get the wrong solution where entropy is decreasing, <coughs> yeah, but normally uh, we don't want to, uh, the philosophy here is that we don't want to ask the, the solutions of equation motion, right? Uh, uh, we just say, uh, I want to write down a path in a draw which is consistent, then whatever equation motion I got is what I get, and then, and then, and then within that set of equation motion, uh, the phenomena you talk about will never happen. Well, I'm saying that this equality you are breaking time reversal, so there has to be some physical effects that tell you that one time direction is better than the opposite, and, and as you say, this is just a mathematical constraint, but it has to mean something in physics. Oh, sure, 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 yeah, yeah, it does mean that, I'm just saying, uh, uh, it, it just means, uh, but here the philosophy is that you don't use the solution to, uh, uh, to constrain your equation. Good, good, okay, yeah, so, so we actually check if this works. Uh, to, to the cubic order, so this anyway. Uh, uh, um, so, and and then uh, then the uh, and then if you want to do the uh, the full quantum theory, then you have to work with that algebra, uh, and uh, uh, with that tiny version, some some kind of quantum deformed version of this thing. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, so let me uh, 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 just uh, 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 you can yeah. For example, for the for the case of uh, um, single current, you can write down a full theory. Uh, so this is a truncation to the uh, uh, to certain derivative order, etc. And then, and then if you do some kind of naive truncation, then you can uh, recover some variation of this uh, so-called KPZ equation, which is the stochastic nonlinear diffusion equation. Oh, yeah, R would be the uh, the symmetric combination of them. A would be anti-symmetric combination. Oh. Yeah, and so the key thing is that once uh, you have these two variables, phi 1, phi 2, you introduce this combination, it turns out the, the symmetric combination would correspond to the standard diffusion modes, and the anti symmetric would correspond to the modes. And, uh, and then the standard, the uh, stochastic equation, uh, corresponding, you just truncate to the quadratic order in the modes. And then, but, but now we have a formalism. You can really uh, understand whether that's a consistent truncation or whether, uh, or whether you have missed some relevant terms. And you can also similarly do a charge fluid. Of course, it's much more complicated, but we have write down the most general theory. Okay, let me just uh, 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 summarize. Uh, uh, so we have written down effective field theory for general dissipated fluid, and that recovers the standard hydrodynamics, and also encodes the uh, in principle quantum thermal fluctuations, and uh, um, yeah. 
Yeah, so, so many uh, 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 future directions, and uh, you can do long linguistics, super cool, you can generalize the various case, and you can, uh, there's many, also many possible applications, etc. Okay, thank you. Sure, 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 sure. It's the same. Just uh, uh, so that in the, uh, that diffeomorphism will induce how your field transform. Just write them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, that's what you. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, yeah, that's you, you can just directly write them down. Actually. But can it not be possible that there are some symmetries which are not in principle space-time symmetries, but field symmetries? Okay. Yeah. Sure. That's what we call the internal symmetries, right? Right. And uh, and uh, for example, uh, in this formalism. I talk about the diffeomorphism in the, in the sigma space, but also there's diffeomorphism in your physical space, and that physical diffeomorphism in the physical space is automatically guaranteed for my setup because I introduced this variable h, and uh, yeah, uh, so let me use the example of this case here. So, uh, so I introduced this b mu, which is the a mu plus mu phi. So the gauge transformation of a mu is automatically satisfied by shifting the phi. By shifting phi, uh, if I shift uh, by gauge transformation here, I automat uh, at the same time shifting phi, the gauge transformation automatically satisfied. And uh, and similarly with the diffeomorphism uh, in the physical space time, uh, you, you do a uh, 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 you do a diffeomorphism and then you shift your x, and that shift of x is like a global symmetry. Uh, from the field theory in the sigma space, it's like a global symmetry. What's the uh, symmetry? Oh, what's the symmetry of that sigma? Yeah, sigma is just a coordinate. A sigma is just a coordinate that we impose uh, that should be uh, invariant on the, say, the pure spatial diffeomorphism and the time diffeomorphism. Yeah, under the transformation of that sigma. Could you tell me what would be uh, the application of this one? Oh. Yeah, so, so, so in principle, there could be, um, uh, yeah, uh, all these possibilities. And so let me mention one of them, which is uh, 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 more field theoretical. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, also maybe related to the turbulence. Uh, uh, so this is one of the, yeah, there are many fantasies you can just think about here. Uh, and let me just mention one, one possible fantasy. Uh, um, so, um, so for example, in this KPD equation, uh, so this KPD equation is a quite big deal, uh, 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 which has been, say, uh, cited maybe 4,000, 5,000 times since uh, it was written down in the, in the 80s. And, uh, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the original KPD equation is a little bit different. Uh, the, uh, the way you put the is a little bit different. Uh, uh, because they don't consider the converged quantity. Anyway, uh, it's it just a differential equation like this, a stochastic equation like this. And, uh, and what's interesting about this equation is that the, because the, uh, it, it, you have a source which can fluctuate even though it's Gaussian fluctuation, and this equation actually have a non-trivial uh, realization boost, uh, a boost law. And actually this have a non-trivial fixed point. So original KPD equation have a non-trivial fixed point uh, under that dynamic of realization boost law. And that fixed point is very, very interesting because that gives you some distribution which is not the standard Gaussian distribution. Uh, and the mathematicians uh, uh, over the years spend many, many efforts to, uh, to find such a distribution functions. And because there's some new universal distribution functions, the field matter has been given, for example, uh, uh, the mass field matter has been given for, uh, for some uh, work in the 1 plus 1 dimension. Anyway, uh, uh, so, so, and what we are doing here is that we essentially rewrite this as a general field theory. And now you just ask what, uh, what's the RG flow of this field theory and what's the non-trivial fixed point. 
And, uh, and then in principle, you can find some non-trivial fixed point here. Again, maybe give you some universal, uh, uh, universality class of described nonlinear diffusion. And so this is one way. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, that's also the way people uh, 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 talk about the uh, lavis stokes equation. Uh, 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 in relation with the turbulence, you can uh, you take the uh, uh, stokes equation for some uh, uh, stochastic source. Uh, again, there's some non-trivial uh, RG flow. Mm -hmm. And now the question is that can, can the scale, can, uh, we know the turbulence has some scaling symmetry. Somehow can scaling symmetry of the turbulence be interpreted as some kind of field theory fixed point? So maybe this kind of field theory can provide the starting point to think about such kind of field theory, field theory fixed point for the, uh, for the, for the turbulence. Because the, uh, even in the 50s and the 60s, uh, 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 the Soviet people, they already realized many things they do in the turbulence very similar to quantum field theory. They're doing correlation functions, they're doing certain kind of averages. They're very similar to, uh, to field theories. Uh, and the scaling uh, in turbulence also looks at some kind of fixed point, etc. So maybe uh, uh, this provides a way to really, uh, 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 as a way to, uh, to derive the fixed point for this kind of turbulence flow. Yeah. Uh, 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 this is just one, one possible fantasy. I don't know whether, uh, uh, whether this makes sense. Yeah. Yes. And so that, that turn that was on the right, that was really a wiener note. That, that, that was just a Gaussian uh, uh, in the, in the, in the, um, no. So the, 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 that term is a, in the KPZ case, it's it, 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 it just got the noise. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's really a, uh, it, it's really a wiener problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And but I thought you said before that that you're not using Udo Kaiser. No. Don't no, use no this was a truncation to that limit. I see. Okay. No. no. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some other way to define a, a, a full interacting theory, and if you do a truncation, then you get this theory. And, uh, and that truncation is really a brutal truncation. And, uh, and, uh, and then uh, the advantage of this kind of theory, you can ask whether that truncation makes sense. Yeah, uh, uh, I think what you are uh, uh, referring to is that you starting from this equation, which people have done uh, 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 a lot in the literature, you start this equation, then you can rewrite this equation as a path integral. Mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, you can rewrite this equation as a path integral, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the, but that path integral will be fully equivalent to this equation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so that part integral is like the way people that talk about plus that's the part. Exactly. Yeah, that's the way people were doing it before. Uh, you started with non-divine equation, then you okay, rewrite it as a part integral uh, by introducing the, uh, an Lagrangian part prior, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's thank Thank you.